Welcome to the Wham Festival, sponsored by the City of Walterboro in partnership with the Colleton County Museum. I'm TJ Grant with the Colleton County Memorial Library. This week's painting episode is Shields Green, the Emperor. Brother Nazar. Hello everyone, this is Brother Nazar again. I'm back and we're, uh, we're doing another paint series. And I am going to be talking about a very important historic figure as well. Um, and this figure is Shields Green. And this is my rendering, my painting of Shields Green. Shields Green was in 1856 in Charleston, South Carolina. He was on a plantation and he actually was in charge of running the plantation. Now, Shields Green was called the Emperor because he's of African royalty and of, uh, as I understand it, he is of Egala royalty. The Egala kingdom is a kingdom that's 5,000 years old that goes all the way back to ancient Kemet. Kemet is now called Egypt, which is in northeastern Africa. But he during the uh, enslavement of Africans coming out of West Africa. He came out of Nigeria. And so um, he's known as the emperor. As a matter of fact, there is a movie called Shields Green, the Emperor, or the Emperor Shields Green. I'm not certain which one, but I'm sure if you look it up, it's not on Netflix because I looked last night. So, <laughs> um, but if you look it up, you'll find that movie and it's a very interesting movie about his life. So. Shields Green was, as I said, on the plantation, and uh, the plantation owner uh, lost the plantation gambling. And when he lost the plantation, uh, the new owners of the plantation, they were very cruel. And so Shields Green had been used to ordering seeds and doing various things that actually um, he, he was in the role of an overseer of the entire plantation and the previous owner uh, treated him kindly and he was the one who referred to him as emperor. And so when the new owners of the plantation came, they did not take kindly to the fact that number one, Shields Green tried to tell them how best to run it. So when they didn't listen to Shields Green, then they came up short on their crops because Shields Green was so brilliant and they thought that he was um, condescending. They whipped him. And when they whipped Shields Green, he accepted it. Because again, it was rare for him because the previous plantation owner didn't do that kind of stuff. And the new owners felt that because they didn't do it, that's why Shields Green didn't stay in his place. And so, when they whipped him, you know, his wife helped him heal. She put the stuff on his back to help him. But then they whipped his son. And when they whipped his son, he punished all of them. And there was four of them. And he, um, should I say, disposed of them. All right? So then he had to run. <laughs> so Shields Green ran. And along with his wife, and this image, this painting I did, uh, which depicts Shields Green and his wife um, and the statement that's being made is that I got your back and she has this look like I, I do I, it's not that I'm you know so brave but we have to do this and so she ran with him and she had his back but they killed him so when they killed his wife they being the plantation owners of the survivors of the plantation owners, or the guys who were chasing him for taking care of the plantation owners. Um, and Shields Green ran to Washington, D.C. And again, this is 1856. When he got there, he met with Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was making a lot of speeches, and his speeches were, were great speeches, but he wasn't changing anything. So Shields Green was about, hey, we're going to have to do something more than just make speeches. So Shields Green went on to New York where he met John Brown and John Brown's son. And so Shields Green 
Dangerfield newbie, John Brown, John Brown's son, um, they went, they all um, got a group together and they went to um, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, attacked the arsenal in an attempt to initiate a war to end slavery. And so they were light years ahead of the Civil War. And as a matter of fact, it's believed that they accelerated things toward that Civil War, which is why when Lincoln ran on that platform of ending enslavement, uh, the nation split. But speak, um, Shields Green was about initiating that split much earlier because, again, all he wanted was freedom for everyone. He didn't just want to be free and do whatever, but he wanted freedom for all. He wanted to live up to the ideals, like Martin Luther King said, um, live up to the creed of the United States. You know, all men are created equal and endowed with certain inalienable rights. And he said that should extend to all men. And so that's the legacy of Shields Green. He fought for freedom, literally, along with John Brown. John Brown was free. Shields Green was the one that wanted to free all Africans. Um, and so we call it the John Brown Raid on Harper's Ferry, but it was literally Shields Green and Dangerfield Newton who were instrumental in initiating this thing and trying to uh, get, gain freedom for everyone. Harriet Tubman was consulted at that time as well. John Brown asked Harriet Tubman, come on and join us, Harriet. But Harriet said, no, John. And Harriet told them they should not do it then, too. Um, and she only made her moves after getting a word from God. She said, I did not get a word from God. That's why I'm not going to do it. Y'all shouldn't do it either. And maybe if they listened to Harriet Tubman, they might have been more successful, but we don't know. But I thought that was an interesting thing I need to throw in there because Harriet Tubman met with them as well. So, um, today, I'll be painting a piece, basically a similar yeah. landscape scene because this is uh, like the plantation. And I just was being dramatic when I put all this fire and flames and him with the gun. And so, uh, you know, I think we'd do another landscape scene, a similar scene of what you would see on a plantation. But uh, this is gallery wrap on canvas. What I will do, if you're gonna paint along, this is what I would suggest. What we have is a pre-painted um, background, completely black. It can be any particular color, depends on what you're gonna do with it. And so this is the sky. My horizon will be here. The foreground is here. I mean, the middle ground is here and the foreground is here. So horizon, sky, middle ground, foreground. Keeping that in mind so that it's, it's accurate here. For accuracy, I will measure, let's see, I want my horizon to be right about here. No, I'll make my horizon here at 17. 17. And then, I'll do this. So if you're doing this on a table, just you, know, you can do it with a piece of paper. You can do it with, with gallery wrap canvas. It doesn't matter. But that's my horizon. And so, remember, this is my sky, my horizon, the middle ground, and I'm about to do some things with my middle ground. Now, I think I better do my sky first. You know, it, it doesn't matter. You can, sometimes you have so many choices, you'd be like, I, 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 you know, and so. But all of that's fun. So my sky is going to be somewhat blue and somewhat white. I think I'll break open a brand new white paint. And you don't even have to get expensive stuff. This paint is something like I think it's like 59 cents at Walmart. It is Apple Barrel Snow White, okay? And the Apple Barrel Blue is called Bright Blue. And that's at Walmart as well. Now, 
Another thing you can do is take some tape and tape all the way across and then you can paint real fast or whatever and don't have to worry about getting it on the line. But it really doesn't matter if we get it on this line because I'm going to have some trees over here after I do the sky. So whenever you pull the brush out of the water because you have your brush, you know, you rinse your brush out and um, you don't keep it in the water. But you always want to rinse it out very good and then you start your sky. And you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come down here and I'm not even worried about it. You see that thing right there? How, that, that, how that's happening? How that water's going like that? I'm not even going to worry about it because I'm putting a field there and you will never know water spilled on my knee. That's why I say we don't make uh, mistakes, we make happy accidents. Got that from Bob Ross. So I'm going to do this so I can cheat. And you'll see what I mean by cheat in a minute because I'm going to get a bigger brush and I'm going to cover this, this space in a little bit. Now, once I get this done, I'll fill in the middle and I'll look like I have such a beautiful sky and folks will be like, wow, you're smart. And I ain't all you know, that smart in this matter of practice and knowing that this is what's going to happen. So, notice what I'm doing. I'm squaring it in. And I think everybody's going to enjoy it. I'm going to get the real big brush. This is the big brush. This is the real big brush. See, even when you, even when you say it, you got to use your big, your big voice, you know? <laughs> All right, so with the real big brush, you do this, and it's much quicker. And then you can put some clouds in your sky. And doesn't matter how you hold the brush, because if you notice, I had the brush like this, then I held it like this, like you're painting a house. It all depends on how you want to do it. Now technically, and really, it should get lighter the closer I get to the to down to the horizon. But it really doesn't matter here because I'm gonna put some trees on this horizon line. Might even put some clouds in this thing. Alright, my sky is starting to look like a sky. Now so let me see, I'm going to uh, play with some clouds here and I'm going to do a peculiar thing with the clouds <laughs> and let's see. Okay, I hope your clouds are coming along. Okay. 
maybe. Just a few more clouds. Just a few more clouds. Take a step back and take a look at them. And that's it, because I'm going to put some trees up in there. Well, you know what? Might as well use this since I got them all. I don't want to throw it away. <laughs> and this is a little time consuming, but if you're patient, you can make really good cloud clouds. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, I need to put some trees in here. And so what that means is, I need to put some black in there again. So, you know, your clouds and your horizon is still intact. And so, what we're gonna do now is put some trees up in there. So it goes a little like this. This is closest to me. So we're gonna kind of do it like this. I'm not gonna get really um, sporty until maybe the end. I want to be able to see where my horizon is, so I'm not going to go all the way down there. So this is going to give depth to the trees that I do put in here. So I want this to kind of look like some trees here. And so it's not going to be even, it'll be, you know, just like groups of trees. And on the other side, I'm doing the same thing. So this is gonna kind of look like this. And remember what I said, the, this, this, the closer it gets, the higher it gets. Okay. Hope well, your trees are coming along real good. And we're going to save the birds and the bees to go in the trees a little bit later. Right now, we're just getting it kind of set up. Then we will. Um, we're going to do something really, I'm going to set it up to do my perspective point, which is the vanishing point where everything kind of goes right into here where this is. And then you'll see why this is not a mistake and that is going to be as if nothing ever happened. So what I'll do here, I'll find my trusty little color pencil 
And I don't use a ruler because I want it to be, uh, you know, kind of naturally flowing. So this is the perspective point. We're going to use this right. We're going to take advantage of this, of this little, what somebody might con consider a mistake, and it's not. And we'll go from there to here, and even over here. Well, right now, I think I need to doctor my, my cloud here because... I'm kind of not satisfied with this particular one. It kind of looks like one of the um, spaceships from the Jetsons. So I know some people don't know what I'm talking about right about now, but the Jetsons was a show that I used to look at when I was a kid. And this almost looks like one of their cars. So I have to do that with it. with the clouds um, at your convenience. The clouds are, you know, I, I love clouds. You can do so much with clouds. The bottom of the clouds are usually darker because when the sun hits it this from this angle, this side is whiter and the bottom side is bluer because it's being blocked by the other side. So now, now I get to make these trees or tree leaves and so I already put the black in it which makes it kind of, uh, you get the, the depth that you want to have and then with the trees the good thing with these trees is you can do all kinds of different color of trees it depends on the time of year This side. And then, like I said, we can put different colors in there. And then we're going to put some tree chunks in there. And then, if you kind of like me, when you, as you get farther down here, you just kind of give the impression of some trees. This is going to be a tree cornucopia of all kinds of things that can be trees and colors that you can find in trees. You can find all kinds of colors in trees. And remember, 
want to say that you don't have to go all the way down here. And I'm going to kind of So, having done that, I need to find my liner brush. Okay, I can still do black. So you can do black tree trunks. You don't want to do green ones. These are just trees that's in the forest. liner brush is really skinny like that. So these are just trees that's in the forest and they should be thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. Other than that the tree would be upside down. And upside down trees don't look good in the forest. And actually if you want to have one like way down here you can make it really thick here and then go like that with it. And the good thing about these trees, they can be a tree that broke off, you know, just kind of like that. You can do just about anything you want to do with them. And the farther they go, the smaller the tree should be. The farther away that they are from and then if the tree is really close to you, it can come kind of look like this. Brother Mazar's feet is hurting, so I gotta get up. But this tree, it's so close. So the limbs are like this. Okay, let's see. That tree is real close. So the farther, it, the closer it is, the thicker the limbs that um, branches are. And so, Let's make one right here. We can do one on this side as well. Now, and if you want, you can put some leaves over here. But I'm not going to put any leaves. I'm going to finish this out with what we know to be the field. This field. goes a little like this. Now I'm going to work on that in a few because these are Something somebody planted in this field. I have no idea what they planted. It might be greens. But the farther you get back here, it's gonna kind of blend together. And right here, whatever it is, the farther away it gets, kind of comes together and the closer it gets, they divide. Okay. 
So they could be beans or cabbage or whatever it is. and the rolls in between, they're wide so that people can work on them and harvest whatever there is to be harvested. So now, because this is like this, oh, oh, we can do it this way. Okay, I hope your, whatever it is you're growing, is looking good. Mine is getting there. And I'm not trying to separate it, I'm just really trying to give the impression that we're looking at a field, something that Shield Green would have seen if he was running through out of into this particular field on the plantation and you can come back at a later time with a black uh, black and brown and kind of fill in what needs to be filled in right here and put as much detail as you want on the whatever it is that they're growing in this field Almost finished. Now, the last thing I will do with this, and I think I better use another brush, is Not the cloud. since we didn't do the sun, but I want to put some 
highlights on this. Just in certain areas. Okay, and we're just about finished. And you can actually put some of this highlight on the plants in the field if you like. And you can mix this up kind of like that. This doesn't hurt either if you do that. This just puts depth into the woods. Depth. So, okay, that's enough of that. And so, this is our field. Uh, kind of touching on what Shields Green was doing, um, where he was working in an area like this. And you can go in and you can put in some brown if you want the ground to be brown, but I'm just doing it like this for contrast because you have great contrast with dark and green. And you can go in and make these, you can make this cabbage, you can make it greens, you can make it broccoli, whatever you want it to be. Anyway, that is my rendering for Shields Green the Emperor and I hope you can look it up and check out the movie because it's a great movie because he's a great man and again I'm Brother Nizar and I thank you for joining me and have fun drawing and painting. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Shields Green Emperor. Thank you again Brother Nizar. Thank you.